Hey, hey, you guys, and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea, and my husband Eric and I are currently pregnant with our first baby that we conceived through IVF. We started documenting here on YouTube our IVF journey about a year ago, um, but before that, we did an IUI, and we just did one of them, but I thought it might be nice to sort of recap what the IUI process was like, just in case there's any of you or anybody out there is gonna be doing um, an IUI this year, um, that you can sort of learn from my experience and kind of get an idea of what to expect when you do your IUI. So if you're interested in seeing what that process was like for us, um, as well as how much it costs, what medications we took, all that stuff, go ahead and keep watching. So we did our IUI in 2016, which was over two years ago. Um, however, I did save all of our paperwork from the IUI. Um, so that's going to help me <laughs> recap what that process was like. Um, and then I also have exact numbers of what things cost. So um, let's just jump right into it. So first, I guess we'll start with who would be doing an IUI. Like what would qualify you <laughs> to do that procedure. Um, I guess first let's talk about what an IUI is. It's just artificial insemination basically or intrauterine insemination. Basically they take um, the sperm and put it exactly where it needs to go at the exact time of the month that is ideal for pregnancy. Um, sometimes they do these naturally without medication and sometimes they do IUIs with medication. I think more so than often they do it with medication so that the doctor can control when you ovulate and time it perfectly that way. So um, you would be considered a candidate for IUI if you um, have not responded to just fertility drugs alone. Usually they wanna start you off with just Clomid for a few months, which will help you ovulate. And if you don't get pregnant with Clomid for a few months, then you will move on to IUI generally. So this is just kind of like the basics of how the, you jump from procedure to procedure in the fertility world, but everyone's case is different. Everyone's clinics um, are going to be different. So this is just based off of my experience and from what my friends have experienced. Some people um, aren't good candidates for IUI because you have to have tubes and working ov ovaries and um, sperm that would be viable. I guess that's the word you want to call it. Like some people, if their sperm has like really low motility, like it can't travel well because it still has to travel a little bit for an IUI, I don't think they can be considered um, like candidates for an IUI. Um, however, me and my husband were undiagnosed infertility. All the tests that they had done um, were coming back fine and they couldn't figure out why we weren't getting pregnant so uh that's why our doctor suggested trying IUI before moving on to IVF and once again I want to just remind you that this is just my experience so take it and learn from it but your experience could be different and always always go by what your doctor suggests um but also don't be afraid to sort of question uh your doctor's like the what he's having you do, it's okay to ask why or is give him other options if that's what you're feeling you, like you should do. You don't have to go just by like doing whatever your doctor says. You can question them a little bit. And another thing I wanted to bring up is a lot of insurance companies cover IUIs. So if your insurance company covers IUI, I would say go for it and do as many as they'll let you do before moving on to IVF. Some insurance companies will say that you have to do like five or six to even move on to IVF and then they'll pay for some of IVF too. Our insurance company does not pay for anything at all. We pay for everything out of pocket. So these numbers will also be based off of exactly what you would have to pay if it was out of pocket. For our particular clinic, we are in Utah and prices also vary from state to state, clinic to clinic. 
Once your doctor suggests IUI as the next step in your fertility treatment, um, you can just usually get started right away with the next cycle. So IUI is done according to your cycle as are most fertility treatments. They're done according to the woman's menstrual cycle. Sometimes they'll put you on birth control to manipulate the cycle a little bit to control it. Um, but we didn't have to do any birth control before our particular IUI. Um, here is what our calendar looks like. We started with a baseline ultrasound. That's what that is right there on the 28th of September, actually. So we started with the baseline ultrasound and that was just basically on um, day one of my menstrual cycle. <laughs> I started taking Famara, which is a lot like Clomid. It um, stimulates, or it stimulates the ovaries to produce eggs, um, and it will just kind of like not not as intense as an IVF stimulation, but it just kind of like kicks your ovary into gear. And I was on, I think five milligrams. I it doesn't really say. I wonder if it says okay I can't find the receipt for um, my Famara but I do know that um, I got it from just a local pharmacy and it was fairly inexpensive so I took Famara for five days and I don't remember exactly how like what the dosage I was on mine says Famara 5QD I don't know what that means but that's what it says so I remember I took the Famara every night before I went to bed for five nights and then um, after on like 10 days cycle day 10 or whatever I had a follicle scan where they checked to see how many um, follicles I had and then after that um, they could determine when I was going to ovulate and so then I took um, Novarel I think is the name. And um, this I got from a pharmacy called Integrity Rx. So that's the prescription for Novarel, which is your trigger shot. So for me, I did the five days of Famara. And then um, on day, I think 14. So I did the follicle scan. And then they determined that like day 13 or 14, I would do my trigger shot, which is usually done... 24 to 36 hours before your IUI. And what that will do is it will stimulate ovulation and time it perfectly to when they schedule the IU actual IUI procedure. So that one trigger shot was $291.46. So I'm sure like Famara was probably like less than $50. Um, so we're about at, you know, a little over $300. Um, in medications at this point and then I do remember I started um, the the day of my IUI I started um, what are they called progesterone suppositories so um, those were from just a specialty pharmacy in Arizona and they were $75 for 100 milligrams of progesterone suppositories. And it was a month supply, so it was 30. And I was just supposed to do one of those every night. And I started again on, I believe it was the day of my IUI. So that was the medication. So we're about $400 for medications. Um, not including like your supplements, like... Um, my doctor had me taking prenatals and fish oil, decaffeinated green tea, I remember, um, CoQ10, and some vitamin C, I think. So anyway, so it ends up being about, you're putting in about $500 or so, I'd say, just for medications and supplements. At least that's what I did. Okay, so after our follicle scan, which um, is basically just where they 
use Wanda, that nice little tool that goes up into you to check out your ovaries. They, like I said, determine when you're going to do your trigger shot, which is a shot that's in your stomach. It's a subcutaneous shot um, that you take uh, before your, I'm pretty sure for us it was 36 hours before our IUI. Um, so that was the first time I'd ever done a fertility shot and it scared me to death. I had my nurse friend come and administer it to me and I freaked out and she did a great job. It didn't even hurt. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but yeah, so that we did 36 hours before our IUI procedure. And then, um, that was a Friday night, I remember. And then Sunday morning was our IUI. And I remember we woke up around 7 a.m., because they had sent Eric home with a little collection cup. He was able to do his collection, sperm collection, if you don't know what I'm talking about, at home, 7 a.m. before our procedure, which I believe was at like 9 or 9.30. So he did that at home, and he ran it over to the fertility center, and they prepped the sperm, because I think they like, um, spin it and like concentrate it or something. I'm not exactly sure what they do with it, but they do something to it. They clean it, wash it. I don't know. Um, they prepped it. And then when it was ready, that's when we were supposed to go in to do the IUI. So we got to the, um, fertility clinic and then they called us back. It was pretty simple. We just went back to like a normal, um, room with the bed and I laid down they had me put my feet up like I was up in stirrups and then they uh, opened my cervix with the little, I don't know what that thing is that does that, but it's kind of uncomfortable. That's probably the worst part of it. And then they stuck a little catheter and I did not like the feeling of that catheter going in. It felt, I didn't, ugh, I didn't like, like it, <laughs> but um, they stuck that in and then um, brought the sperm in and put the sperm into the catheter into me and then that was pretty much it I it was like 10 minutes I was laying there well and then they did have me lay there for another 20 to 30 minutes after the IUI so there I laid and just hoped that the sperm was getting to where it needed to go and that it would get us pregnant so then we went home and went about our day. They didn't tell me I had to do any bed rest or anything like that. It was just, okay, now go about your life for two weeks. So we had, yeah, a good two weeks. I had 15 days. So it was a Sunday that we did our IUI. And then I remember two weeks and one day. Um, it was a Monday morning that we were supposed to go and do our uh beta test to test my blood to see if HCG was present and I was pregnant. However, um, on the Sunday before I was supposed to go in for my blood test, I started my period and I remember being absolutely crushed because I thought maybe it worked. I just, you know, I had hope that it worked and it obviously didn't. My period came right exactly on time and um, I remember the next morning I ended up not going in to get my beta test done because I didn't think I had to because I knew I wasn't pregnant. And they called me and they told me that I still needed to come in because they had to make like for sure that I was not pregnant through the blood test. So I ended up going in later and they did confirm that I wasn't pregnant. So um, so yeah, it's kind of was a bummer. We ended up only doing one IUI because just for us, we felt like we weren't going to have success that way. And we had the money to do IVF and we didn't want to waste some of that money, um, on trying IUIs. So, um, speaking of money and costs for our IUI, it cost, I have the receipt here, um, it cost us $935. Um, 
just for the IUI process, including like the ultrasounds and stuff and the procedure. Um, however, if you add in the medications, which were about $400, four to $500 with supplements and stuff, that ends up being, for us, we spent about $1,400 to $1,500 for an IUI. Um, it's not going to be that, that much everywhere you go. Sometimes they're a lot less, but, um, for us, that's how much we spent. So that's why we did decide to move on to IVF because we would have to spend about that much every time we did an IUI and IUIs really are not that successful. I don't really know a lot of people who get pregnant with IV or IUIs, but people do get pregnant. I think they're worth a shot. Um, definitely talk to your doctor and weigh the pros and cons about that because they are obviously significantly less expensive than IVF, but they, I don't know, maybe they're not for everyone. So that's basically my experience. If you guys have had an IUI, um, let me know in the comments below, maybe share your experience so we can help each other out and give those who might be doing an IUI this year or soon um, a better idea of what to expect. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support and the community we have here on YouTube. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye.